I like this linebacker class actually a lot more than I did the previous linebacker class. I know a lot of people really liked uh, the 2020 linebacker class, but I think this one, I think this one's better and we'll get into it. But first, I'm Stephen Lagardell, better known as What's Crackalackin? It's your boy Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. Yeah, that's my opening, right? <laughs> But we're talking linebackers today. This is probably the um, the uh, how would I say this is the position group that I have the most move in on my board. Just because you know, if you if you're not new to the channel, you know I'm a sucker for linebackers that are really good in coverage. So there was a couple of guys that I really needed to move up my list, and some I had to move down. But if you want to see the complete list, the expanded rankings. Go to fan to fan network it's the link in the pinned comment it's also in the description below i have 22 linebacker prospects currently evaluated all together so you can go check that out there i'm going to go over my top 10 today here and we're going to start with micah parsons out of penn state the guy him sitting out ain't going to affect his draft stock he's a top 10 top 5 top 10 pick he's an athletic freak he most he does his dirty work around the line of scrimmage he is literally in the backfield when asked to be. The guy's a phenomenal run run um, stopper. He takes on blocks. He's a phenomenal pass rusher. The guy he put on he had 23 pressures on 87 pass rushing snaps. He he just destroys blocks. He isn't the one knock. He isn't the greatest playmaker in in coverage, but by no means is he bad. Like he only had one game last season where he allowed 50 plus yards he allowed no touchdowns pretty like he's solid in product in um pass protection it's just he is not gonna you're not gonna see them swats you're not gonna see those uh interceptions from it but his athleticism and his instincts are stellar and something where it's like hey i could definitely see this guy get much like can be a difference maker in pass coverage eventually but if anything like this dude's a monster linebacker like as far as hey you see that guy in the backfield i'm i'm gonna hit him in the mouth yeah yeah i'm coming for you like it's he's scary and then i got nick bolden at number two i'm really high on nick bolden a lot of people will have nil and moses as their number two which i get it the guy he's a pretty freaky athletically in his own right Nick Bolden, he isn't necessarily the athletic freak uh, that Moses and Parsons is, but he is definitely much better in pass protection than those guys are. He had eight pass breakups. He had two picks. He only allowed 180 yards in coverage last year. Very compact. He's kind of built like a cement truck. Um, he's not great at taking on blocks, but he's got a lot of lower body um, strength and because of his size and his length i think that's like he won't he won't be a guy like he'll get into the backfield but it won't be because he took on blocks he's not that guy i think if if you're asking him to i think he's a guy that he's dead in the water the minute he he gets engaged in on a block but if he gets his hand on a ball carrier that ball carrier they ain't gonna be the momentum stop he may not push guys back but they ain't going forward. He, like I said, not the he's not the athlete compared to Parsons and Moses, but he's he has good speed. He's got the best instincts in terms of coverage in this class, and because of that, I have him high. Then Dylan Moses here at three, athletic freak. I talked about it. This guy, he's probably gonna ro run in the low four fives, even maybe even high four fours. He's a sideline to sideline athlete. He's got great explosiveness. But I do want to see how he rehabs from that ACL injury. He is a sure tackler, but he was pretty bad in coverage in 2018. He was going to make the move in 2019 to middle. Um, that didn't happen because of the injury. So I want to. I just want to see it first. The guy, he's got all the physical tools and the upside. I just want to see if he's put it all together since then. So I want to see him this, this year. Chaz Surratt here at four. The former quarterback himself. The guy he played. He, he plays with great understanding in coverage. Like, it's almost like he's played the quarterback position. But he's very good. He's he's actually a sideline-to-sideline -side athlete in his own right. 
but he is still extremely new to the position and you could see that because he it's not great at wrapping up the guy he had 20 he missed 27 tackles on 120 attempts but the thing is he doesn't shy away from contact so if he could clean up his game versus the run he could he's another linebacker i think could sneak into the first round he is that good in coverage where i'm like okay get those missed tackles below 20 let's talk and then Jabril Cox, another guy uh, at LSU, he's a transfer from Nor um, North Dakota State, that could find himself pretty high in this draft. Uh, he is he was a superstar for the uh, where are they the Buffaloes? I don't know for North da for North Dakota State. Um, he was a superstar for him. He was a two time All American there. Plays all over the field, whether it's in the backfield, in coverage, stopping the run. The guy, he's just he 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 utterly demolished lesser competition and i love the move to lsu if he could prove to be the same this is another guy honestly we could talk about in the first round this is a really good linebacking class in three seasons there at north dakota state he had 18 pass breakups six picks in coverage i love to see that but he had 14 sacks on top of that 32 tackles for loss the guy's just a monster he'll now take on that patrick queen role there at lsu so it'll be very interesting to see and then six, I got Jack Sanborn out of Wisconsin. The guy, he is a bit of an average athlete. That's why he is not higher on this list. But he plays with good a good change of direction. There's really no power to his game, but he's stellar in coverage. He's got he he's very good at um reading coverage. Like the guy, I would say he's got very good, very, very good instincts. Um Again, playing with no power to his game, is he now then just uh like a uh, is he like a nickel or dime linebacker, or is he a guy that we can't keep on the field on early downs? I don't think that's the case. Um, but he does. He did have 24 missed tackles on under attempts, uh, and he does struggle to play around the line of scrimmage. But being so good in coverage, I'm a sucker for linebackers really good in coverage. That's why I had um, Willie Gay Jr. so high on my board last year. I think worst case scenario, this guy is a third round pick, but I like I like what I've seen. And then at seven, I got Jeremiah Wusu uh, Koromora. Hopefully, I didn't butcher that too much. Out of Notre Dame, he actually played at my old high school. Represent. Let me flex on y'all real quick. But he he just. <laughs> He plays this weird little hybrid role at Notre Dame. He's a linebacker slash safety. He's very undersized, as you can see, 216. Um, but he does play all, majority of the time around the line of scrimmage. He blows up plays in the backfield, and he's made some just scary plays in coverage um, from all around that area. He's only allowed 36 yards in his final six games last season. Um, guy, he plays with great speed. He goes from like zero to 60 in like no time there's really no in between for him he does overrun plays sometimes in the backfield like he's so good at just like shooting back there like tackles even tight ends they can't do nothing but he does overrun a lot of plays so i'd like to see him play with a little more discipline but the guy is he's extremely young i think he's a redshirt sophomore um right now but if you could put on the if you could put on the weight and find a bit of a balance to that speed maybe 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 uh, tap the brakes once or twice uh i just i just love this guy's traits like i said he's phenomenal in coverage linebacker is definitely the spot for him and then at eight garrett wallow at a tcu this guy he's he might be the like i talked about nick bolden wallow is right behind him as far as the best coverage linebacker in this class he's for he used to be a safety as you can tell um, he brings great athleticism to the position and even as a pass rusher he had 12 pressures and three sacks on 49 pass rushing snaps a guy that's still kind of learning the position as you can see from he had 17 missed tackles last year but the upside is so intriguing that th this guy is probably my sleeper if i'm gonna be like hey who's my, who's your sleeper in this class this guy might be it and then pete wiener uh werner out of ohio state another guy who's very good in coverage but he plays in a very 
linebacker friendly scheme there at Ohio State. You see, with them, they kind of like in coverage, they just ask them to sit in shallow zones. But he he did what was asked of him, and he did it very well. Uh, he's very good at sealing off the sideline from running backs, so it kind of forces running backs to have to head north, which is very good. Um, as an athlete, he is a bit limited, but again, the guy makes up for it with very good instincts. Um, and honestly, I think he could probably translate to a reliable starter down the road. That's what you kind of look for in the third, fourth round. And Charles Snowden out of Virginia here at 10 just because this guy's so much of a tweener. Virginia used him all over the freaking field in so many different roles from pass rusher to, hey, you're dropping back in coverage to, hey, play run contain. He does so many things well, but you kind of hear like, he, you kind of hear that it's that whole you're good at much but you're a master of none um again still very much raw prospect just because ah they have him do so much he can't really get great at one thing i really wish they would just kind of be like you know what just be a pass rusher i honestly think that's calling card pass as a pass rusher because he's got ridiculous length to really um to really uh, block the vision of passing lanes for the quarterback. But uh, again, size, length, I love it. I love the way he moves. Uh, he's definitely an interesting prospect in this class. But if you want to see the rest of my expanded rankings, they're on fan to fan which means go to, the, go to my pinned comment, hit the link. Go to the description, click the link, and you get to see the rest of my, uh, rest of, I guess, rest of my rankings there. But... As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later. This is